he is one of our fan favourites. It's always very nice to check in with Jack the Lad. How are you? I'm all right, mate. I'm not too bad. I'm not too bad. Happier now after the last couple of weeks. I bet you are. How much How much spring in the step was there when you got out, finally? Um, I don't want to be too Do you feel soon. good? Do you feel good I, when you I, ran I feel, on? Or do you... I, I feel really good. I got this far last time, and then obviously I picked up another little knee injury. Um, um, but yeah, I felt good to get out there, you know, another semi-final. Um, I'm just, just, just desperate to be involved in these big games, to be honest. So um, yeah, it feels good to be back. I bet you are. You put a bit of time on the hair. Give us a little side profile as well. It's looking very... Oh, um, man, that's a grown, dream. It's growing a little bit. I need another another trim tomorrow. A little, little tidy up for the trip to Twickenham. Um, before we do rugby and boots and jock straps and things, how are you getting on with the Bambino? Is it all all right? Yeah, very well. Very well. Uh, Nori was three end of last month and Zimmy's just turned one. So our lockdown baby has been alive for a whole year, which is God, scary. Is that- is that really? You just had a first birthday. Yeah, she had a first birthday on Friday, so she actually came. Our first game was on Saturday, which was awesome. Oh, that's amazing! What's terrifying about that is I would have probably put about three months as the, but that's lockdown, isn't it? Yeah, that's lockdown, mate. It's gone like that, isn't it? Unbelievable. I know. Um, I well done, you and Team Noel. Um, yeah. So, yeah. T- t- before we do the, the actual running around the boots and stuff, how have you been as a caged tiger over the last? How long's it been? Three months? Two months? Well, I played. You been alright with I, it? I played um, against wasps. Came off the bench against wasps. Played against Bristol, and then got injured against Worcester five weeks ago. Um, so I, but I, I damaged my knee pretty badly. So I thought that was it, to be honest. Um, but, you know, our physios are class, our doctors are class, they work miracles. Um, came back a bit sooner, but I feel feel, feel great, to be honest. Um, like, like I said before, like semi-finals, finals, they don't come around too often. Um, so I was just desperate to be involved in them and, and play my part. You're, you're timing your run pretty well in these things. It's like, you lads, you lads get us there and I'll come and do the biz when we're, when we're in town. <laughs> Don't say that. Um, H- H- Hoggy, Hoggy's not my best friend at the moment. Um, well, I was going to, I was going to, I was going to ask about that. So obviously, yeah, he's had that shirt for a little bit. And you, was it, was there a hug, a little goose tap or have you not spoken since oh, no, Baxter no, said, he, no, he's, you're in? He's, he's good as gold. He's good as gold he is. He was that. he was the first person to text me uh, when the team went out last week. Um, was just like well done, like so good to see you back. You've had you know shocking time, but um, yeah, but he was the first person. Obviously, he's down. It means a lot to him to be playing, and you know he's normally involved in these big games. So um, it's awesome to see, in a weird way, it's awesome to see that it's it's affecting him um, because yeah. that's a sign of a good team player, and that's kind of what we want everyone at. You know, obviously, I feel very very bad, um, but it's just one of those things, isn't it? And if the coach is giving me the nod, the coach is giving me the nod, and I want to take it. Uh, and take my opportunity but you know kind of the way we are as a team you know we're good at gold off the field as well and you know the start of the week can be that time for frustration and stuff but obviously when it comes to game time um we're all pretty much on the same page and, uh, and we know what needs to be done there was a you got a really good insight into i'm gonna keep calling him baxter because that's what you do but into his <laughs> psychology where he, he released in the he, he said post the semi-final he said you know i rang Stuart and i said you ain't playing. I want to know what your reaction is going to be. And Hoggy, everyone knows, you know, he said, I'll be, I'm on it. Good. We'll get into it. But it's quite interesting to put that out in the in the press. What what sort of words did you have from Rob prior to the game? And um, Not too much, to be honest. Um, just said, get on with it. Just get on with it, which is kind of the way I like it. Um, I don't like the big build-ups and stuff. You know, I was fully prepared to be, you know, on the bench if I was lucky. But... Um, you know, things work out different sometimes. And, you know, to get the knowledge at fullback, I was just a bit like, you know what, I'm, it's my opportunity. I want to take it. Um, I want to play well, not only for myself, because I've been out for a long time, but for the team. Um, because, you know, if you lose that game, you're out, season over, you're done, no more Twickenham, yeah. uh, no more trophies. So I kind of put, put all that like stuff to the side and almost um, acted like there was nothing wrong with me and no injuries and nothing like that. And you've just got to go 100%. And, just pray you get through the other side, to be honest. I can't remember if I've asked you this before, but if you were the first one in the changing room and you've got 15, 14, 13 and 11 and you can pick your peg, which one are you going to? Um, you can't have all four. No, I really don't know. Um, 
Do you care? I'm going to use someone no, who that, probably, gets more probably, excited when you get the 15 shirt than the 11 shirt, 14 not, shirt. Not really, because I honestly don't feel there's any difference when maybe they're different for England and stuff like that. But certainly for Exeter, you know, there's not actually a whole lot of difference between wing, fullback. Um, Centre's obviously a little bit different, but I've not played there for a couple of years. But um, yeah, there's really no difference. Obviously, you've got the, phase, uh, the starter pays and stuff, like any team. But in terms of our phase and stuff, it doesn't really matter. So I don't, I don't really look too much into it. It's just as long as I am in that 1 to 15, I don't care whether I'm 7 or, or 13 as well. As long as, as long as I'm on the field, I really couldn't care less. <laughs> Has Eddie come back to you about your hybrid open side role yet? Or is that not, for the next not yet? Season? Obviously, obviously, I've been away from England for the last couple of years now. I've not actually been involved yeah. since the World Cup. So, uh, because Have of injuries not? and stuff. So, you never know. We might relight that flame. But um, obviously, for me, it's just about staying on the field at the moment. Did you get a little text, a little 3 a.m. saying, How are you feeling? Well done. I like this and I want more of that. Or is I haven't yet. I it? haven't. I spoke to Eddie a few weeks ago, literally just after I hurt my knee. Um, and he was just like, yeah, look, mate, you're doing well. Um, get back fit and then we'll see what happens. So it's kind of, that's as much as I need, to be honest. Yeah, to know the carrot is still there. Um, tell me about the game. It was a hell of a game. Did you, in, interestingly, did you see what was happening at the Met, uh, at the Bristol game before um, you kicked off or not? Or is that gone? So we saw what we were able to watch before we had to start then concentrating on the game was 28-0 with 20 minutes gone. Um so obviously and at that point you are thinking well at that point I think everyone's thinking that Bristol have done this and they've yeah. won the game um, and then when we were warming up or just before we were about to start a warm up before the screens went off uh, they still had the game up um, and obviously it went to extra time and stuff none of us were watching because we were doing our warm ups but um, yeah they obviously played it all the way out and then we heard the crowd cheer um, because obviously Quinn's just what, scored that try so we kind of put two and two together and it was yeah, mental, mental, mental ended into a mental game, to be honest, wasn't it? Insane. Absolutely insane. And then you obviously, I mean, your, your game was a belter as well. I think it was 149 points in the two semi-finals, which is, which is a pretty good afternoon's Classic. entertainment if you're on the sofa. Yeah, definitely. Um, for you, did you, did you trot out and think, good to be back, and it was all very comfortable? Or were you blowing after two minutes thinking, what in God's name is happening here? Um, I actually wasn't. I was fully prepared. You know, I, um, I was actually pretty ill. Um, I had, yeah, I had like a real tight chest, bit cold, bit, bit coldy, really. Obviously not COVID. Um, coldy, not COVID. Well, there are there are other illnesses out there, believe it or not. Um, yeah, <laughs> but um, not that we've heard yeah, of so in the last eighteen months. <laughs> yeah, so I was all bunged up, and I, I think I had a bit of a chest infection. Um, and I was just like, do you know what? It's just my luck. My body's finally all right, but then my, I'm going to get this illness, or whatever. But I was just like, I'm just going to crack on with this and just get through it. Um, because adrenaline's a lovely thing. Um, and then once you're into it, you're kind of into it. So I was too much, probably too preoccupied with actually making sure I was feeling all right uh, to even worry about too much what was happening in the game. And I was fully prepared to be absolutely shattered and not being able to get up. But do you know what? I actually felt all right and it wasn't too bad. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm quietly hoping this week's the same. Oh, man. A uh, couple of meat pies as well. I, mean, I know that, well, I know it's always a team thing. Token guys, token guys. Yeah, you got you got to, you know, they're on the bedpost, so to speak. Um, I know you don't judge yourself necessarily by that, but it's a great way to come back, isn't it? I mean, does that not sort of gets your name in the papers in the right way and in the right columns? And do you get a little kick out of that? Um, not really. Uh, I don't, it, it certainly gives you headlines. Don't get me wrong, you know, two tries and stuff like that. But I think I had a combined, I think I five meters for both tries that to run with the actual ball, um, and that's. And that was just in the first try. So um, the second try was a bit fluky. But um, yeah, not really. I think I don't really look too much into that. And uh, pretty much like you said, I know it's a bit cliche, but when you get to this stage, it is literally about the team winning. Um, so I couldn't care whether Simo got another 20 tries in that one game. Um, as long as we won and we made it to another final, I think that was the most important thing. The sixth final in a row. Are you ramping up this week, tapering down? What's the kind of the, 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 the approach? Um, I think pretty much like any other year. Um, obviously, boys are were pretty sore from from the weekend. You know, Sale are very physical. Um, so Monday was fairly slow and um, recovery and reviews and stuff like that. But I think as the week goes on, you can start seeing the energy and stuff again. And today's session was obviously um, quite good, quite fun, um, just because it's our last session of the year as well. So it's obviously boys that are leaving now. 
that we're never probably going to see again or would certainly play with. Um, so, you know, we made a bit of a fun and uh, fun, a, a bit of a joke about that and um, said goodbye to the levers and things like that. But um, yeah, it was good. And I what think do they get, the levers? They get, they get a side they, shirt and a little silver tankard? They get a tunnel down the end of the pitch with everyone slapping them on the back. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they obviously they get they get a few bits and bobs, a few presents and stuff, but that's what we kind of do at the end of a at the end of a training session. Um, but we we're, we're fairly, fairly chilled during the week, which is good. I think you know as long as we're in the right place for for the weekend, which you know you got to have something seriously wrong with you if your team can't get out for a final at Twickenham. So uh, you know I'm pretty sure that we're going to be, be be pretty sweet when we get there. And what's the the sort of the, the approach? Do you, do you go up the night before and stay? In Twickenham? Yeah, we, well, before we stayed at Twickenham Marriott, we've done that once. We stayed at Scion Park. We stayed at a couple of other hotels around. Um, but we always go up on the Friday. So we'll do like a team run Friday morning. Um, a bit like we, we pretty much do exactly the same on every away game. We don't do anything different. Uh, we do our team run at the, at the ground, um, shower up, have some lunch, get on the bus, and then off we go, stay at the hotel, chill in the morning, and then play. I was going to say, are you, is it quite a relaxed bunch? I mean, you, you seem a very relaxed bunch. Is it a very relaxed bunch the morning before or, or the, the day of the biggest game of the season? What 10 months have been all about? Yeah, yeah. surprisingly very chilled. I think if you were an outsider coming in, you you wouldn't really think we had a game in the morning. Um, boys just get up for breakfast. Luke Kowalicki probably doesn't get, up. say it's a five o'clock kickoff or three o'clock kickoff, what we normally do. I don't think Kowalicki gets out of bed till about 12. Right. Um, and then we'll just come down with his bag, won't have any breakfast, we'll just have a bit of lunch and then get on the bus and go and play. Um, but I think you can like kind of tell... Like all good teenagers. Yeah, exactly. So um, it starts getting serious because then boys start doing... As we get closer, we have a meeting before we get on the bus. Um, and as we get closer to that meeting, there's boys stretching and warming up and firing up in the corridors and stuff like that. Um and then you could tell in that meeting, boys' headphones are on their heads. And then it's Rob, Rob's chat. Boys are very serious, switched on. Headphones on, on the bus, and off we go. Have you done much on Quinns this week? Have you, I mean, have you watched the game in detail? How the hell do you analyse a team that is utterly abject for 40 minutes and utterly unplayable for the next 40 and then sort of hangs in their own rope-a-dope type thing? I mean, yeah, it was weird. Uh, weird. A weird preview. Um, it's kind of just the way the, Quin, the, the Quinns are. Do you know what I mean? Like, There's nothing different from what they haven't done anything magical that they haven't pulled something out of the hat do you know what I mean they, it's just what Quinns are they're exciting They, you give them time you give them space um, they'll score tries and they've kind of they've always been like that uh, haven't they and it's obviously easier said than done because they're still doing it um, but yeah but for us it's just pretty much not doing what Bristol done in that <laughs> in that second half you know they're, they're trying to throw three or four passes in their own 22 and, and things like that and it's just like Sometimes rugby is so so simple. Um, yeah. If you get thirty points ahead in a game, like you, should, you really shouldn't be changing what you're doing. Do you know what I mean? You need to be, you need to be, you need to be on on your game. So you can't switch off and you can't change anything because you know, ideally you want to get another thirty points. But um, yeah, we've obviously looked at the game and, and and we've played them a few times now, so we kind of know what what's going to happen and what's going to what's going to come. But at the end of the day, it's about what we can do on the field. Which is a re- which is a really interesting point. I mean, we had Marla on the show this week, and I actually, with reference, I suppose to twenty nineteen, I, I said, "Have you have you played your final already? How on earth do you find that emotional energy again a week later, having sort of put everything out there?" And I I, I can't remember what he said. It wasn't really. I don't think it was very comprehensible. But you you guys have got to be supremely confident as a team that dominates and has total control. I mean, I know they are never knowingly beaten, but do you? Are you pulling yourselves down a bit trying to go into this? Are you trying to scare yourselves? Do you know what I mean? Um, I think if we listen to everyone else, um, you know, they're always, they're people are already saying that Quinn's underdogs and that Exeter should win this easily. And if you start listening like that, that's when you're going to lose the game. Um, I think the thing for us is we've lost, obviously, if we lost three finals now against yeah. Aries. Yeah, true. Um, so you're exactly that, do you know what I mean? If you've played your semi-final with your final, then you, you leave two of them empty-handed. And you've got nothing to show for your season. Um, last year, we, no, two years ago, we were top. Uh, won our semi-final, played Saris in the final. We we're playing well, lost in the last minute, and that's it. You know, doing his game over that season, you might as well have been. Um, you might as well have been eleventh because you're not going to get relegated. But you might as well have been eleventh because you've got nothing to show for that season. So 
we've had that disappointment of of losing the finals. We've had that enjoyment of winning a semi final and over enjoying it and thinking we're just happy to be here. Um, whereas now we know that you know, like the weekend boys are, you know, saw our families after the game. Uh, I think lads, a couple of beers is nothing really massive. Same old, same old stuff. But you know, would certainly have a lot more um, if we if we manage to win it at the weekend. Um. I know it's all about the weekend. I don't want to sort of go too far beyond that. But have you had a little email from Warren Gatland in any way? Keep fit. Enjoy what you've been up to. Welcome back. Um, I haven't. Um, you I, I wouldn't be able to tell you. I don't know who's on that list or if there's a list. Um, it's obviously pretty. It's pretty simple for me to what I have to do. Um, I think you know a lot of people say was I disappointed not to not to be called up. I think obviously. The obvious answer is yes. Like I've experienced one tour, I'd love to go on another one, but I wasn't angry. I played one season. Um, yeah. I played one game, sorry, uh, and that game was on the week of selection. So, like, <laughs> that would be, be a bit silly of me if I was, you know, throwing my toys out the pram if I didn't get selected after that one game. So, um, you know, for me, I was injured all season. I was just about getting back on the field. Now I'm on the field. Um, I've just got to play well. Do you know what I mean? I've got to play well again this weekend. Um, I'm would would really like to meet up back up with England um for the two games against Canada and USA. That's um good. but then it's just simple, isn't it? All I all I can really do now is play well this weekend. Um yeah. and the rest of it will look after itself. Because... And do, obviously I know there's clarity of thought, but is there like is there if you're writing notes ahead of the game, you know Carter and McCoy used to write their notes, would you do, you know, simple things, da 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 and they're just the bottom lines? Would would you allow yourself <laughs> to kind of it's a genuine question because you know we discussed this before. When you pick a Lions squad pre-tour, you pick players who are in form and who can get back into form. But if you're picking guys who are coming in, they've got to have credit in the bank and know what they're doing, and you've got that, and they've got to be absolutely red hot in that moment. And if you can do what you did on Saturday that you did last week, that ticks both those boxes. So I just I just wonder whether there is a I want everyone to know I'm ready if I'm needed or whether you're just like if it happens it happens um yeah pretty much if it happens it happens you know the it, it's actually again very very simple I make it as simple as I can in my head um if I go start thinking about other things like that then then I'm not really thinking about the game it's it literally comes down to if I'm playing well on that day then if I'm playing well on that day it means that we're hopefully the team's in a better position which means then we're going to win another trophy um nothing really past that because you know, there's there's times obviously we won our first Prem uh, Cup, um, you know, my first Lions tour, um, and everyone was a bit like, "Are oh, you going to take it easy? Do you know what? You can take it easy because we're going on a Lions tour. What if you get injured?" And I was just a bit like, "Not no, because if I take it easy, I'm not going 100, percent which means then some of our boys are. If I let the team down, we're not going to win a trophy um, because it could have been down to me. I could have you know messed up the game, lost up the game, whatever. If I wasn't on on my top game, so." Uh, you know, I think if you're playing well and you're winning games and you're winning trophies like that, people are going to look, coaches are going to look. Um, and if you're surrounded by good players as well, you know what I mean? That's when it looks after itself. Um, so the, the more complicated you make it, the obviously there's more stuff that goes on in your head. And at the end of the day, all you've got to do is just play a game of rugby. Um, yeah. so there's no point thinking about anything else. It's such a stupid question, but I will give you the credit that your media training is strong. <laughs> can't penetrate the uh, the barrier. But, but it's, um, it's, 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 it's yeah, no, no, I, I get. Yeah, I know, I know. Um, I, I would, I would, I, if, if I didn't believe it, and I thought, yeah, look, I'm going into that game to go on a Lions tour, so I've got to play well. Then, but that just genuinely isn't true. Like, um, literally, last week is probably the reasons why I played well was because one, it was my first game back, um, and I was desperate just to get on the field, and and two, obviously, like I said, Zimmy. Um, and Nori were at the game uh, with my partner Zoe, and that was their first game in, in a long, long time. So, did they have any idea? Was uh, there, Nori, I mean, Nor- Nori's Nori, into it. I can imagine. Nori did. She got into the chance, and she was pointing me out on the on the field and stuff. Zimmy completely clueless, um, but loved it. Zoe said so. Um, that was obviously another big, big incentive for me to 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 get back and playing again. Because if it wasn't for this, the, these two games, I would be next season, and that time had passed, so they would have missed the whole year of it. So. Um, yeah, that's just as simple as I make it in my head. Go on, yeah. Um, just a quick word. I mean, Johnny and Luke, we know we know what they do. Just a quick word on how you think Sam will go. Obviously, you know, Saturday needs to happen first, but in South Africa, 
I think he'd be. I think he'd be class. Um, whether he was start or not, obviously, I'd love him to start. Um, I think he'd be. I think he'd be just as good. Um, but obviously, Toby's got a lot of credit in the bank there, hasn't he? Um, but if you're looking, you've got to get him involved in the squad some way because if I played against him and I saw him, the form everyone everyone in the world knows what kind of form he's in. Yeah. Um, and if you got to 60, 60 minutes, 50, 60 minutes on the clock and you saw him coming off the bench fresh, um, you'd be shitting yourself, to be honest, wouldn't you? You'd be thinking, oh, I'm I'm knackered from tackling and now I've got to try and tackle this guy who's quicker than a winger. Um, so, yeah, for me, like, I think he'd be classed for minute one, but whether they do that or not, but you've got to get him involved because he is. If you're picking players on form, he's he's on form. Like, there's no doubt about it. Good luck to him. Um, okay, so your to-do list is win on win the Prem on Saturday. Yeah. Hopefully, link up with England for a couple of games this summer. What what are the summer holiday plans? Or do you not think about things like that? Until um, yeah, I am thinking about that. Uh, like you said, in that order, good Prem game, good Prem final, another trophy. Hopefully, um, two England games, and then I'm just going to go home for four weeks, four or five weeks, oh, yeah. back to Cornwall. Um, I think that this will be the first, I'm not, I, I touch wood, first time that I've not been in a cast or have an operation or anything. So I'm actually looking forward to enjoying um, some Sand time. Sandcastles without sand down your moon boot. Exactly, exactly. I'm not worried about stitches and stuff like that. Oh, so um, I'm actually really looking forward to just getting home and being in, on the beaches and being in the sun, um, barbecues and all that stuff. Um, and I'm ready, uh, and I'm ready for, uh, I'm, I'm really looking forward to next season already. Again, not looking too forward ahead, but I, uh, I think next season's season where I'm going to stay injury free and um, and go all the way through. Hopefully, so say all of us. You, deserve, you certainly deserve a proper proper run of it. Um, quick check in on the biz bits as well. How's mustard? What what else you got going on? Mustard's good. Um, yeah. They're cut, coming out with some stupid stuff, but I love it. Are you quite active in that or not? Or are you just sort of yeah? yeah I like the all the, I like all the funky stuff. Um, yeah. So I do a lot of the designs and stuff. I've got a nice little tie dye t shirt, which I'm pretty excited about. Um, but other than that, we're good. We've got off to my pub back home, which is pretty. I'm gasping for a pint down there. I can't wait for that. Um, Do you actually work, are you working behind that? Are you rolling the barrels around and handing out I'm peanuts? Not, I'm, I'm pretending to pour a pint now again, but then I sit yeah. on the other side and I have about twenty pints when I'm allowed to. <laughs> um, but it's just a nice place that I can go down with my mates and what's that called? Uh, the swordfish. Swordfish. And where is it? In uh, in Newlin. It is in Newlin. Yeah. Well, it's my old local. Um, so I remember when I was a kid, obviously, everyone remembers the kid, parents being in there and stuff. And it was obviously from the ceiling down to head height of smoke when you're allowed to smoke in the, in the pub. But I remember, it being, I remember it being absolutely rammed in there and like every weekend and being such a good laugh. And I remember being younger thinking, do you know what, I can't wait to be old enough to actually drink in here and have a good time with my mates. And then when I got to 18, the pub was shit. <laughs> and I was like, well, my time has passed and there's nowhere to go. Um, but then it came up for sale and... Obviously, a couple of my good mates um, own pubs and run pubs. So I was like, right, let's, let's, let's see if we can buy it and let's see if we can get it back up and going again. Um, to how it that used is to awesome. Yeah. So and is it, have, you put, have you returned it to a sort of smoke-filled, proper ye olde smugglers <laughs> inn or is it a themed harvester? <laughs> yeah, fake smoke, uh, fake, uh, smoke machines at the top there. Um, it's, it's, it's slowly getting there, to be fair. It's because... Um, Back down there, there's no nightclubs. There's literally a couple of bars and a couple yeah. of pubs. Um, so we tried making it the place where you can go. And, and it actually was traditionally from where the old fishermen used to come in because it's right next to the harbour. Um, and all the old fishermen came in. They'd spend all their wages, spend two days in there drinking, and then go back to sea on the Monday. Um, so that's how it used to make his money. But, yeah, we tried to make it a bit more for the locals and uh, back to where it used to be, live bands and stuff like that. So it's good, it's good fun too, fair. That is awesome. That is a very good story. Maybe we'll do a live good, bad rugby down there and raise some money for Penzance and Newlin at some point. <laughs> That'd be awesome. Um, good on you. It's very nice to check in. Um, and good luck this weekend. That's a simple thing. Let's see how that unfolds. And then fingers crossed as England. And we'd love to see you out in South Africa as well. Um, but we'll let those cards fall in the order that they fall in. Go get them. Very nice yeah. to see you, Jack. Thanks Best for the family. Me, yeah. And we'll catch no up soon. Worries.